Hello and welcome to Indus News live from Islamabad. I am Munir Hamid with the news of this hour. Let's begin with the headlines first. In Brazil, 1,311 more people have died from COVID-19, increasing the tally to over 84,000. The United States has reported 1,225 deaths and over 76,000 cases in the last 24 hours. The total number of infections in the country has surpassed 4 million, with over 144,000 deaths. Meanwhile, Pakistan's death toll from the virus has crossed 5,700, with 54 fatalities in the last 24 hours. After 1,209 people tested positive overnight, the tally of infections has crossed 270,000. Globally, the death count has exceeded 632,000, while cases topped 15.4 million. China has told the United States to close its consulate in Chengdu City in the country's southwestern Sichuan Foreign Ministry says the move is a countermeasure to the United States' demand to close Beijing's consulate general in Houston. Meanwhile, the U.S. has called for the creation of a new alliance of democracies to counter what it calls China's aggressive policies. In South Sudan, thousands of families have left their homes in the troubled Jongle region due to an outbreak of violence following months of peace. The United Nations mission in South Sudan says the armed groups attacked the village of Likwangole. It said the people have sought sanctuary next to a UN base in Pibor town. Prayers will resume today in Turkey's historically monumental Hagia Sophia after a period of 86 years. President Recep Tayyip Erdogan is scheduled to join hundreds of worshippers for the reconversion. Earlier this month, Ankara turned back the former Byzantine era cathedral into a mosque to signify and celebrate its Ottoman roots. And in football, Liverpool have lifted the English Premier League trophy for the first time in 30 years after beating Chelsea by five goals to three. Injured Liverpool captain Jordan Henderson lifted the EPL trophy in a close ceremony after the match at Anfield. News in detail after a short break. Welcome back. Now in Brazil, 1,311 more people have died from COVID-19, increasing the tally to over 84,000. The United States has reported 1,225 deaths and over 76,000 cases in the last 24 hours. The total number of infections in the country has surpassed 4 million with over 144,000 deaths. Worldwide, the death count has exceeded 632,000 while cases top 15.4 million. The virus is making a dangerously aggressive comeback in Iran, where 2,621 people tested positive overnight. The death toll in the country has crossed 15,000. In Australia's state of Victoria, the outbreak is not abating as it reported another record high of new daily cases and five deaths. The surge in infections in South Africa has forced the government to shut schools for four weeks. Meanwhile, Uganda has recorded its first death from the novel coronavirus. In Asia, China reported 21 new coronavirus cases on the mainland, with most being locally transmitted. Cluster infections continue to worry South Korea as more than 50 cases emerged in the past 24 hours. While Pakistan has reported 54 deaths from the coronavirus in the past 24 hours, raising the total to 5,763. The health ministry says 1,209 new cases were reported overnight as the tally crossed 270,000. Officials said over 219,000 people have recovered from the virus so far. 
The ministry said there are now over 50,000 active cases in the country. Sindh is the worst hit province with over 115,000 infections, while Punjab has reported over 91,000 cases. In Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province, the tally of infected is nearly 33,000, while there are over 11,000 cases in Balochistan. The capital city Islamabad has reported close to 15,000 cases, while Azad, Jammu and Kashmir and Gilgit Baltistan have around 3,900 cases. Now, Pakistan and China have agreed to deepen economic cooperation as the two sides held the second round of bilateral political consultations. At a virtual meeting, Pakistan's Foreign Secretary Suhail Mahmood and Chinese Vice Foreign Minister Liu Xiaohui discussed a wide range of issues. The two sides reaffirmed their commitment to the Afghan peace process and the China-Pakistan economic corridor. The Foreign Secretary briefed the Chinese officials of India's illegal actions in Kashmir and ceasefire violations along the line of control. Mahmood said India's aggressive actions are jeopardizing regional security. The two sides also agreed to take relevant measures to support economic recovery in the aftermath of the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, Afghanistan's acting foreign minister, Hanif Athmar, says Kabul will never allow its territory to be used to hurt any other country, including Pakistan. Addressing an event via video link, Athmar said terror groups also pose a threat to Pakistan and the fallout from terrorism has affected all countries in the region. He said the Taliban should seek power through ballots and not bullets. The acting Afghan foreign minister has also proposed a referendum in the country to decide its future. Atmar said that the outcome of the intra-Afghan dialogue process will be submitted to the United Nations Security Council. Now, China has told the United States to close its consulate in Chengdu City in the country's southwestern Sichuan province. China's foreign ministry says the move is a countermeasure to the United States' demand to close Beijing's consulate general in Houston. The ministry said it has informed the U.S. Embassy of the decision to withdraw its operations in Chengdu. It said Washington's move was a serious breach of the terms of the China-U.S. Consular Convention and the international law. The ties between the two countries have worsened this year over a range of issues, including the coronavirus, South China Sea, Hong Kong and trade. Earlier, Beijing threatened to retaliate if Washington did not reconsider the orders to close China's consulate in Houston. Meanwhile, the United States has called for the creation of a new alliance of democracies to counter what it called China's aggressive policies. Speaking in California, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said the United States and allies should use more creative and assertive ways to pressure China to change its methods. Pompeo said if the free world failed to put Beijing in line, the upcoming generations will be at the mercy of the Chinese Communist Party. He said the combined economic, military and diplomatic power of the UN, NATO, the G7 and the G20 is enough to counter Beijing's threat. The secretary said Washington is perfectly positioned to lead this effort based on the country's founding principles. The US and UK have accused Russia of testing a weapon-like projectile in space which can be used to target satellites in the orbit. The U.S. State Department described the recent use of what will appear to be an actual orbit anti-satellite weaponry as concerning. The UK Space Directorate has expressed concern over the test and said the Russian satellite had the characteristics of a weapon. Russia's Defense Ministry said it was using new technology to perform checks on its space equipment. Russia, United Kingdom, United States and China are partly to a space treaty that requires that outer space is to be explored by all and purely for peaceful purposes. The treaty adds that weapons should not be placed in orbit or in space. Now, the U.S. says non-proliferation cooperation between Moscow and Washington will reinforce global security and stability. Talking to media, U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said both nations face big strategic challenges concerning arms control. Pompeo said Washington and Moscow are set to begin strategic dialogue to discuss the next generation of arms controls agreements. 
He said both countries share the common interest of making the world a safer place. The secretary said China has declined Washington's invitation to participate in the negotiations. Pompeo said Washington remains hopeful that Beijing will reconsider. The United States has begun talks with Japan about deploying mobile American Marine units in Okinawa. In an interview, U.S. Marine Corps Commandant General David Berg said armed units will work closely with Japanese forces. The commandant said the deployment will prevent any potential adversary from taking the next move. Earlier in March, Berger published Force Design 2013, plan to trim aircraft numbers, dump most cannon artillery and cut heavy armor. This comes as Washington have accused Beijing of using the coronavirus pandemic to further territorial claims in the South China Sea. Beijing insists its intentions in the region are peaceful and has accused Washington of trying to drive a wedge between countries in Asia. United States Democratic presidential candidate Joe Biden and Barack Obama have slammed President Donald Trump's handling of the pandemic. In a video message, Biden said it cannot be imagined to say irresponsible words while holding the presidential office. The presidential candidate said he does not understand Trump's inability to get a sense of people's circumstances. Obama said it's hard to fathom anybody wanting to take away people's health care in the midst of a pandemic. Biden has started his campaign by using video messages to engage voters in order to excel in the digital presidential race. Turkey has slammed France for demanding European Union sanctions on Ankara over the Greek conflict. Foreign Ministry spokesman Hami Aksoy said Turkey cannot be threatened through sanctions. Aksoy said statements of France's President Emmanuel Macron have no value for the country. He said France has lost its neutrality and chance to contribute to stability in the eastern Mediterranean. Exoy said Paris has not been able to get any results from its policies and will also fail in the future. The comments come after Macron demanded EU sanctions against Turkey claiming violations of Greek and Cypriot waters. The United Nations Security Council has approved a request by the Libyan government of national accord to hold a session of the sanctions committee. Libya's envoy to the UN Tahir El Soni said the session will be held at the end of July over violations of the arms embargo. The request comes as part of the GNA efforts to uncover countries that have provided support to militias. The Security Council imposed an open-ended embargo on Libya in 2011 to stop supplies of arms and military equipment to and from the country. Libya is involved in a bloody conflict between forces led by Commander Khalifa Haftar and the UN-backed government headed by Faiz al-Sarraj. Now in South Sudan, thousands of families have fled their homes in the troubled Jonglei region due to an unoutbreak of violence following months of peace. The United Nations mission in Sudan says armed groups attacked the village of Likwangole. The United Nations said some 6,000 people have sought sanctuary next to a UN base in Paibo town. Its tensions remain high in Paibo with the prospect of many more families seeking protection. The mission called on parties to immediately stop fighting, pull back and return to their home areas. The UN said external actors need to stop deliberately stalking the conflict for the sake of local communities. Moving on now, in Thailand, hundreds of protesters gathered near Bangkok to demand the government's resignation and the dissolution of the parliament. A network of student groups joined anti-government forces under the Free Youth Movement in Pathum Thani province. Protesters said Prime Minister Prarith Chan Ocha's government has made no plans for the future of the youth. Thai youths from different groups plan to hold gatherings in Bangkok and several other provinces throughout the week. Since last year's election, a court has dissolved the second largest opposition party, giving the ruling coalition firmer control in the parliament. More news coming up after a short break. Stay tuned. Welcome back. 
Prayers will resume today in Turkey's historically monumental Hagia Sophia after a period of 86 years. President Recep Tayyip Erdogan is scheduled to join hundreds of worshippers for the reconversion. Preparations of the opening continued around at night as people flocked to the square in front of the Grand Mosque. Many of the early morning Fajr prayer are today on the pavement outside the mosque to mark what they see as a historic day. Earlier this month, Ankara turned back the former Byzantine era cathedral into a mosque to signify and celebrate its Ottoman roots. Now, Germany has offered $7.5 million to support two bilateral technical cooperation measures in Pakistan. In a statement, the Germany embassy in Islamabad said solidarity, I beg your pardon, in times of crisis is more important than ever. The statement said Team Europe has decided to upscale its support to local Pakistani governments in their fight against the pandemic. Germany will provide $0.5 million to promote activities to mitigate the socio-economic effects of the pandemic on local level. Berlin will also commit $7 million to support Pakistani communities that lost hosts of Ghan refugees to improve local health services. Meanwhile, four Philippine soldiers have been killed in a helicopter crash in the country's northern Isabella province. The country's air force says the chopper crash on takeoff at the Inkoyan city north of Manila. It said one person survived the crash and has sustained injuries. The air force said five soldiers were on board the military helicopter, including two pilots and three crew members. It said the aircraft was conducting proficiency training for night flying. England has issued new face covering guidelines less than 12 hours before the new rules come into force. Face coverings are now mandatory in public spaces such as supermarkets, indoor shopping centres, transport hubs, banks and takeaways. The government says shop owners can refuse entry to people who do not have a valid exemption under the rules. The new law also mandates city police to hand out fines of up to £100 to those who do not comply. Health Secretary Matt Hancock has urged the public to play their part by following the new guidance as COVID-19 restrictions are eased throughout the country. Now, Britain says that about 30 million people in the country are to be offered the flu vaccine this year. In a statement, the government said this will prepare for a winter that can see the annual flu season coincide with a surge in coronavirus. The statement said the traditional flu program will include all people over the age of 50 for the first time in the people they live with. It said children in the first year of secondary school will also be offered the vaccine. Plans for Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland have not yet been announced yet. Social distancing and hygiene measures are in place to stop coronavirus from having an impact on the amount of the flu going around. Moving on, three people have been killed after heavy rains and strong winds triggered flash floods in South Korea. The Central Disaster Management Headquarters said the victims were found dead in their submerged cars in the southern port city of Busan. The authority said one man was reported missing after being swept away by a flooded stream in southeastern city of Ulsan. Rescue authorities said they had evacuated 195 people to safety, while 51 people were rescued nationwide. Parts of inter-city highways have been closed in the capital city of Seoul, while thousands of households suffered power outages in the Gyeonggi province. Busan recorded rains of up to 80 mm per hour, while downpours of 215.5 mm pummeled Ulsan. Stocks in Asia have slumped over worsening tensions between China and the United States. Investors became wary about Beijing told Washington to shut its Chengdu consulate. Mainland Chinese stocks deepened losses by the afternoon, with other Asia-Pacific markets also moving lower. 
In mainland China, Shenzhen component dived over 4%. The Shanghai Composite lost over 3%. Over in Hong Kong, the Hang Seng Index declined over 2% as Tencent and Alibaba tumbled down. Sales Cosby has declined by almost half a percent. In football, English champions Liverpool beat Chelsea by five goals to three at Anfield to cap an entire league season undefeated at home. Injured Liverpool captain Jordan Henderson lifted the EPL trophy in a close ceremony after the match in front of an empty cop. Reds raced into a 3-0 lead via goals from Naby, Trent and Georgiana before Olivia Kirills pulled one back. Roberto Firmino restored the three-goal cushion, but the Whiskers rode back through Tammy and Christian. Alex Chamberlain strikes six minutes from the time, put the result beyond any doubt as the champions moved on to 696 points. Chelsea now needs a point against Wolverhampton Wanderers in their fixture to qualify next season Champions League. Well, that's all for now. For the latest updates, you can follow us on social media at indus.news. Take care.